Hey everybody, I'm a big fan of Switzerland and things from Switzerland. I visited there as a child and one of these days I'd like to go back again. It's a great place to visit. Now, a lot of you guys know that I collect Swiss Army knives. I have quite a large collection. This is one of the nicer ones. This is the Swiss Champ XXLT that has a built-in butane lighter, among other things. Of course, I like Swiss cheese. Ooh, look at that. Let's give it a taste. That's good Swiss cheese. And of course, we all know there is no more authentic Swiss cuisine than Little Debbie Swiss cake rolls. And of course, Swiss Miss hot cocoa. And by the way, when you go to Switzerland, this is all they eat 24 seven. So with all these Swiss items that I like, it occurred to me that I've never had any Swiss trains. And so I decided to rectify that and here we go. No, this is not made of Legos. This is the MTH three rail O scale Swiss Crocodile electric locomotive. And we're gonna check it out right now on Eric's Trains. All right, so the MTH Swiss Crocodile. I am super excited to finally have one of these in my collection. I've been looking for this for quite a while. So I'm gonna start off this video by talking about the history of MTH European trains, my relation to them, and why I've been looking for these for a while, and how I finally found one of these. So if you don't like all that talking, don't worry, you can skip ahead to the next chapter. You won't hurt my feelings. So MTH first started cataloging their line of European O-scale trains in 2012. It was the 2012 Volume 1 catalog, and in that first catalog, they actually had the Swiss Crocodile, and this was offered all the way up until 2016, and the European train line as a whole was offered in the catalogs all the way up until about 2020 or 2021 or so, although in the last few years, you could tell that they really weren't making any new European trains. They were sort of getting rid of unsold inventory. The European O-scale line wasn't very popular here in the States, and for good reason. Most people here want to model American railroads, but the product line was really aimed at the European audience, and I think that's where most of them were sold, although I don't think it was incredibly successful, otherwise they'd still be making them. Now, if there was a lack of success, it wasn't due to the models being subpar. These are fantastic models. I think it was just down to being the new player in an existing market. That's always a tough position to be in. Now, of course, I've never worked for MTH and I don't have any behind the scenes knowledge about how successful the product line was, but just based on my own observations and my gut feeling, I think it did okay, but it was never a runaway success. But at any rate, all of them did eventually sell. And from what I can see, everybody who owns any MTH European trains, they're holding on to them for the most part. And so that makes most of the MTH European trains extremely hard to find now, especially here in the States. And this affects me because over the years, I've kind of fallen in love with these MTH European O-scale trains for obvious reasons. They're absolutely beautiful. And now they're kind of hard to find. Now, to be sure, when they first came out, I did order some of them. I originally ordered four of the European steam engines. I also got some of the beer wagon box cars and the Orient Express passenger cars. But if I could go back in time, I would have ordered everything because finding some of these locomotives and pieces of rolling stock now is very difficult, especially in three rail O scale. And yes, I do realize that three rail European O scale is a cornucopia of contradictions. I mean, number one, I'm running European O scale on an American O scale layout. European O scale and American O scale are slightly different. American O scale is 148th scale and European O scale is 143rd scale, I believe. So they're slightly different. I'm also running it on three rail track and I don't have a European coupler. I've got an American style coupler, but it's not even a scale coupler. It's one of those big lobster claw O gauge couplers. So yeah, I'm sure there's some purist modeler watching this right now who is having a heart attack and calling me a complete idiot for spending money on something like this. But you know, to each his own, and this is the layout I've got. This is what I do model wise. And so if I wanna run some of these European trains, this is how I have to do it. Anyway, so by my count, during the years when MT 
ETH was actively producing these, they made 10 European locomotives, and with the addition of the Swiss Crocodile, I now have six of those. So I have the Trax F140 AC1, the SNCF 141P Mikado, I've got the 231E Chapawan Pacific, I've got the Swiss Crocodile that we have here, I've got the S36 Express, and I have the EST Era 2 Class 241A. So the remaining four locomotives that I want to get at some point, if I can, are the Taurus ES64, the DRDB44 Class Jumbo, which I've never seen anywhere, not even in two rail, the E94 Crocodile, which is sort of a shorter squatter version of this, and then the Duchess class locomotive. Hopefully at some point I'll be able to pick those up and complete the collection. And then in terms of rolling stock, MTH made some beer wagon boxcars, I've got some of those. They made some passenger cars, I've got some of those. And they also made some modern freight cars, which I only have one of those right now. It's a modern gondola. And I wish I could find some more of the modern tank cars and gondolas. They are so cool, but they are probably the hardest thing to find. I don't think I've ever seen any of the modern tank cars available, especially in three rail. All right, so now that you know all that, which was probably more than you wanted to know, let me tell you how I ended up getting the Swiss Crocodile. A while ago, I put a post on my YouTube channel letting people know, hey, I'm really interested in getting MTH European O-Scale stuff, so if you see any for sale, especially three rail, let me know. And so a friend of mine and a fan of the channel, Joker's Trains, a while back, he let me know, hey, someone on the OGR forum is selling a Swiss Crocodile and some freight cars. And so I went on there, and sure enough, he was selling this locomotive and 12 of the beer wagon box cars. I didn't really need the beer wagon cars, but I figured, well, he's got them. I might as well make an offer on the whole lot. So I was able to bring home the Swiss Crocodile and all 12 of those beer wagon cars for $1,275, which I thought was a fair deal. So I wanna put a big thank you out there to Joker's Trains for pointing me to the guy who was selling these. I am so happy that I finally have one of these in my collection now. And by the way, the original retail price on the Swiss Crocodile when it was brand new was right at $900, $899.95, I believe. And that's about what you'll pay for one of these nowadays. And that goes for all of the MTH European O-Scale locomotives. The prices haven't gone up that much. Yeah, they're hard to find, but it's one of those things where they're low supply, but also low demand. There's not a lot of people out there looking for these things. And so if you can find one, the prices are usually around what they were originally, and they're not super inflated like you see with some O-Scale locomotives. So when I bought this, it wasn't in a brand new mint and box state. It had been lightly used. It's very hard to find any of these European locomotives, if you can find them at all, in a mint in box state. But whoever had it had taken very good care of it and it was in great shape. In fact, the only problem that it had when I put it on the track was that one of the two panographs was not working. I could hear the motor turning inside when the panograph was activated, but it wouldn't go up or down. The other one worked just fine. So I opened up this center cab area to look at the motors that drive the panographs and found that the belt on one of these, yeah, these are belt driven, the belt was broken on the one that wasn't working. Now the belts they use fortunately are just glorified O-rings. And in my workshop, I have a collection of spare O-rings and I was actually able to find one that fit this thing perfectly. And so I installed the new belt slash O-ring and the panograph sprang to life and worked good as new. So then I went ahead and replaced the belt on the other panograph just so they would both have fresh new belts and now everything is working great. As far as features go, because MTH started making these in 2012, it does have Protosound 3.0 on board. Now, of course, the standout feature is gonna be the automatic panographs that go up and down automatically when you change direction. The other cool thing is that the panographs aren't just decorative, they are fully functional in that you can power the locomotive using just the panographs. That's right, if you have a functional catenary system on your layout, you can throw a switch on the locomotive and that will disable center rail power and enable getting power through the panographs. That's pretty cool. And then finally, you've got the PFA sequence, the passenger freight announcement sequence. And because this is the Swiss Crocodile, those announcements are done in German, or at least I think it's German. I tried to get a translation of the crew talk sounds, 
but they're talking a little too fast for Google Translate to understand what's being said. So if somebody out there is fluent in German and knows what they're saying, I would love it if you would put a translation in the comments below. I seem to recall maybe five or 10 years ago, somebody published the translations somewhere, but I can't remember where those were. But yeah, it would be fun to know what they're saying. I'm pretty sure it has to do with trains. I don't think they're talking about the stock market or the price of oil. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna power this thing up, but I wanna try something first. I've got several MTH electric locomotives in my collection that have operating pantographs where you can supposedly power the locomotive from an overhead catenary system, but I don't think I've ever really tried it, so I wanna see if it actually works on this locomotive. I'm sure it does, but I just wanna demonstrate it. So there's a little panel back here that can be popped off. Let me see if I can do it without flinging the panel across the room, there we go. And then under that panel, there are two switches. The top switch will change between three rail and two rail operation. Obviously, I want to keep it in three rail operation. The bottom switch will change between center rail power and panograph power using the catenary system. So I'm going to switch it to panograph power. Now I've got power on the track. Obviously, there's no power on the panograph right now. So let's try to start it up and see what happens. And nothing happens because it's trying to start, but it's configured to get power from the pantograph, not the center rail, and so it's not able to start up. So, let's connect this gator clip to center rail power, and the other end we'll put on the pantograph, and when I do that, it should actually start up. And I believe it'll work for either pantograph, regardless of whether it's up or down. So if I take another clip to center rail power and connect it to this lowered pantograph, and then I disconnect this one, it should remain powered up. And it does. Huh. Pretty cool. So there you have it. There's proof that you can run this thing from an overhead catenary system if you have one. Okay, that was fun. Now let's go ahead and start this thing up proper. So you can see right now, this pantograph is raised because we're traveling in that direction, but if I change direction, that one comes up and that one goes down. Pretty cool. And here's the whistle. And here's the bell. Even though I don't think these European locomotives had bells, that's kind of an MTH holdover from their American stuff. So here's the lighting on the forward end of the locomotive. And you can also turn on that third light up above like that. Now, don't ask me what all these lights are for and what they do. I'm not an expert in European railroading. I just know they're there. And then when you change direction, that one turns red and then the lights on the other end are now white. Okay, let's go ahead and move it out.
Erstfeld offen, 40, Ausfahrt zu. Ja, verstanden. Erstfeld offen, 40, Ausfahrt zu. Salut Lokführer, du hast für eine 54, 84, 56 Achsen und 450 Tonnen. Bremse ist gut. Salut, verstanden. 56 Achsen, 450 Tonnen, Bremse wäre gut, danke. Du, ich habe noch ein Problem. Ich habe noch eine Fahrleitungsstellung zu Eurolo. Du musst mit gesenkten Bögen einfahren. Du hast einen Rapport dazu. Aha, das auch noch. Einfahrt mit gesenkten Bögen in Eurolo. Danke. Ja, genau. Gute Fahrt. Du, Meister, fahrst du ein bisschen langsamer über die Ablenkungen. Der Spurt nicht schüttet sogar auerhaft. Ja, komm. So schlaust du mir da hinten nicht ein. Du kannst schon gut reden. Du hast noch einen auf dem Bock, der schaut, dass du nicht einschlafst. Ja, schon recht. Ich gehe jetzt hinten, dann können wir endlich fahren. so there you have it the mth swiss crocodile a beautiful locomotive and i'm thrilled that i finally have one of these in my collection and hopefully at some point in the future i'll be able to add the remaining four mth european o scale locomotives 
We'll see if I add those, I will do videos on them as soon as I get them. Now, if you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And an extra big thanks to my premium tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names at the end of this video. And lastly, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com store. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.